Hi everyone, welcome back. In previous lecture, we have created and set up React application. In this lecture, we are going to understand the React application project structure. Well, if you go to VS Code, here we have our React application. Next, let us understand the important files and folders of our React application. So let us begin with package.json file over here. Well, package.json file basically contains all the required dependencies and scripts required for our React application. For example, if you can go to dependence section over here, you can see the React library and its version that is 18.2.0. React DOM is a library, its version 18.2.0. Okay, so within our dependence section, we configure all the dependencies required to our React application. Next, you can see the dev dependencies and these are the dependencies for our development. Next, here we have scripts to run the React application, to build the React application and to preview the React application. And here we have a React application name, React application version and the type like module. All right. So basically in a package.json file, we configure all the dependencies and scripts required for our React application. And whenever we run the npm install command, then npm install command will install all the dependencies and scripts. Okay. Next we have v.compute.js file. So within this JS file, we can configure the plugins and development server related details. For example, here you can see plugin section. So within this plugin section, we can configure all the plugins and within server section, we can configure the development server related details. All right. Next, we have index.html file. Well, we use react.js to develop the single page application. And in typical React application, you can find only one HTML file named index.html file. And if you go to index.html file code over here, especially if you go to body, body contains a single div with ID root. Well, React uses this div to render the component. Next, we have node underscore modules folder. Well, whenever we run npm install command, then npm will create this folder and it will keep all the downloaded JavaScript libraries and packages within this folder. Next, we have public folder. Within a public folder, we can keep all the static files like images and SVGs. Next, we have a SRC folder. So all the development related things will go inside a SRC folder. So if you expand SRC folder, you can see here main.jsx file. Well, main.jsx file is a you know, main entry point for a JavaScript. For example, if you go to index.html file, within index.html file, the main.jsx file is imported using script tag, right? So whenever we run the React application, then index.html file will serve in the browser and then it will internally call this main.jsx file. It means main.jsx file is a main entry point for all the JavaScript related code. And within a main.jsx file, you can see react-dom.create root and document.getElementById and then root. Well, this root is basically a div ID. If you go to index.html file again, you can see here div has ID root, right? So again, if you go to main.jsx file, so here we are getting the div by div ID. And next, this react-dom again call the render method to render the component in a div. Okay, so basically React DOM uses create root method to get the due by due ID and then again it will call the render method to render this app component within that due. Just remember this piece of code is responsible to render the top level component in a due. Next, let us move into index.css file. So this CSS file contains all the you know CSS related code. Next this is the default generated CSS code. So we can simply remove this code. Next, go to app.jsx file. So this JSX file contains a app component. So app component is a base level component or a root component. And this is the auto generated code. So what we can do is we can remove this code. Okay, we can write our own code over here. All right, so here also let me remove this code. Let me remove the imports as well. Perfect. Next, go to app.css file. So here we can configure all the application level CSS classes. Okay. So here, this is the auto generated code. So let me remove this. Next, go to assets folder. Within assets folder, we can keep the static files like SVG and images. 
So these are the important files and folders in our React application. Next, let us understand how the flow goes whenever we run the React application. Okay. So whenever we access the React application from the browser, then index.html file will get served in a browser. And then within an index.html file, you can see script tag here basically imported main.jsx file, right? So next main.jsx file will get called and within a main.jsx file, you can see here react down dot create root method. So this create root method will get the due by using the due id root and then it will again call the render method to render this app component within that due. Next within an app component, we can write the code. For example, here go to return statement and here let me write something like heading. So here let us use h1 tag to write the heading for example hello world. Next let us save the file and you don't have to restart the development server. The changes will be automatically reflected. Next let us go to browser and you can see here hello world heading is displayed in a web page. Okay so this is how the flow goes whenever we run the react application. Okay. So whenever we run the React application, the index.html file will get served in a browser and then index.html has a script main.jsx. This script will be loaded in a browser and then this script is responsible to render the component. Okay. Next, if you go to a browser, so here just inspect this page and if you go to console over here, you can see download the react dev tools for a better development experience so go ahead and click on this link and from here we can download the you know extension so here i am using chrome so let me install the extension for, for chrome over here and click on add chrome click on add extension all right so this react developer tools is pretty useful we can track the components so here let me close this next go back to our react application and here let us refresh our react application and here you can see the components so here let me use this side and you can see the components so go ahead and click on components over here right now we have only one component that is app component and you can see its details like the source is main.jsx it means the app component is imported in this source file that is main.jsx file okay next what we will do we will quickly create one more component and we will import that component in this app component so let's go back to our project and here let me quickly create a file let's call it as hello world.jsx well either you can use js extension or jsx extension Next, within a hello world.jsx file, let's create one functional component. So here, let us type function. Let us give component name as hello world. All right, and let us export it. Export default hello world. Next, within a functional component, let us write the JSX code. So first of all, let us have a return statement, and then let us use h1 tag to print the heading hello world perfect now we have created a simple functional component named hello world component next we have exported this hello world component as a default so let us import this hello world component in app component so go to app.jsx file over here let us remove this and notice here this you know tag is basically called a fragment okay so this is an empty tag basically so this tag in a react is called a fragment within a fragment tag let us import hello world component so make sure that hello world component is imported at the top perfect next save this file and let's go to browser and just refresh this page and go to components and here you can see the component tree structure app component within that we have a hello world component so this is how you can track the components like the parent component and its child components. Alright, great. In next lecture, we will see how to install Bootstrap in a React application using NPM. Alright, great. I will see you in the next lecture.